Today we're going to be covering our last topic on beam deflections and um, specifically we're going to be discussing strain energy do strain energy of deflections and it's going to follow basically the same lines that we've that we've followed with every other time that we've discussed strain energy so here we're going to we're going to start by relating the rotation theta to the applied moment m so if you remember theta using a small angle approximation can be written as l over the radius of curvature which then is equal to l times kappa and then kappa can be written as m over or uh, kappa can be written as let's see uh, m over ei so you end up with uh, l m over ei so looking at this more carefully there's a linear relationship between theta and m where l over EI is, e, is just the slope of a line. So this is our slope L over EI and there's a relationship. We can also do the reverse relationship by just inverting things where then we have M is equal to EI over L times theta. So if we draw a little graph here of m theta, then we know it's a line, okay? And then the slope here is gonna be equal to EI over L. This is EI over L. And so if we want the strain energy, it's gonna be the area underneath that curve so the work w the external work has to be equal to the internal work or the strain energy and then that's going to be equal to m theta over two okay so there's our first important equation there so that's the basic equation where we're saying since the internal energy and the external energy have to be equal we can compute the strain energy by looking at the action of the applied loads through rotations and theta over two. Okay, and going a little further then, we have that the strain energy of a deflection is equal to m theta over two. And now we can choose to either eliminate m or eliminate theta. And so we'll get two different equations depending on which variable we eliminate. If we eliminate theta, we end up with m over 2. And then theta, again, we just did that. It's ml over ei, ml over ei. And so there's our first equation, m squared L over 2 E I. All right, so there's, so that's the strain energy U if you know the bending moment diagram, the equation for the bending moment M. Likewise, we can instead eliminate M so we can do theta, leave theta, and then write m in terms of theta. So we end up with theta e i over l, which is then just e i theta squared over 2 l. Okay, so these two expressions are are equivalent. 
In fact, you can easily see that the way that you relate these two expressions for strain energy is simply through, um, well, let me, let, me, let me hold off on that in a minute. Let me come back to that in just a minute. Um, all right, so we can now can compute strain energy if you have the bending moment equation or you have some equation for the rotation theta. Um, if, if things are non-uniform, so if, if for example, this was a non-uniform situation where the m was not a constant or theta was not a constant, we have to do a little more work. So that's gonna be the last step of the lecture. Let me write again a few things here. So if you have, if you want to know what the differential change in the internal energy, and you you know the bending moment equation, then it's going to be m. It's going to be a function of x now, right? Squared dx over two e i. Okay. And then if you want to know the total strain energy, you just take the integral then of du. Okay, so this is if you have some equation for m that's not a constant function, right, which they normally aren't. This would be a non-uniform bending situation. You have to compute m as a function of x, plug it into this differential, and then integrate over the length of the beam. Okay, likewise, if we want to eliminate M and think about rotations and further we want to eliminate rotations now and think about deflections we have that we have EI over 2L and then we have D theta squared okay but D theta if you recall from a previous lecture, d theta is just v double prime dx. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and plug this in to get our uh, the most important equation of the lecture, which relates strain energy directly to the deflection of the beam. Okay, so then we end up with, uh, let's see, Actually, sorry, this this now, this L also needs to be a dx. I forgot that. That's a dx too. So that's a dx. And then d theta is v double prime dx squared, which then leaves us with our final equation ei. over 2 Let's see v double prime squared dx okay so this is this is the most by far the most important equation for strain energy so if you if you can compute the deflection v which is often the unknown that you compute in particular if you're doing a computer method for structural analysis, this is by far the most common starting point, is you generate an expression for strain energy, and then you can compute V and solve for V such that if you take two derivatives and plug it in, you get the strain energy. Okay, so that's, that's the basic idea with strain energy. It's very much like all of the other strain energy concepts that we've learned where you have a linear relationship between an applied load and some internal deformation variable in this case m and theta you take the area underneath that linear relationship and then you can eliminate certain variables to get different expressions for strain energy all of which are equivalent